how to get into wrestling photography. How do I get into wrestling photography is a question that I'm often asked to do a video on. Um, so here it is. I think it's important to understand, first of all, why you want to photograph wrestlers or wrestling shows. If it's to be part of the show or to get free tickets or to get to know the wrestlers, you're probably doing it for the wrong reasons. I can only speak from experience and from the reasons why I got into it and how I got into it. And I suppose that's probably the best way I can give you advice. Nearly 10 years ago now, I wanted to produce a body of work that I could submit for a photographic qualification. And that qualification I was hoping was going to lead to more artistic development and more opportunities within the business side of photography. I knew that the body of work I was producing couldn't just be standard portraits of just people from my day-to-day -day business, business headshots, you know, child portraiture, that sort of thing. So I knew it had to be something different. And as a wrestling fan, I knew that wrestlers were different and could provide something that was aesthetically diverse and dynamic from the point of view of a sort of judging process. I set upon the idea of photographing as many wrestler portraits as I possibly could in a calendar year. After six months of approaching different federations and wrestling promotions and wrestlers uh, through various emails, I'd received zero positive responses. For whatever reason, uh, whether that's in 2014 that wrestlers were terrible at replying to emails, whether it came across as <laughs> something they didn't want to do, uh, for whatever reason, um, that approach didn't work. And it was difficult at the time because it was 2014. Wrestling promotions and wrestling websites weren't as well presented on the internet and online as they are now. In my experience in any line of business, whether this is wrestling or, or anything, nothing really beats face-to-face -face meetings and um, looking people in the eye and having conversations with them as a way to network. So despite the six months of having no replies, I got to a point where I was either going to persevere or give up. Um, the photographer Rankin uh, was interviewed for a piece in a magazine uh, where he was asked the question, how do you photograph pictures of famous people? And his reply was, I ask them. And so I decided to be a little bit more direct in my approach. I found an article in the local newspaper for a local wrestler by the name of Chris who had recently recovered from a rare stomach condition. And so I contacted the journalist and offered my number to pass on um, so that I could speak to him directly and see if I could get him in. He was a really interesting character, big beard, piercings everywhere, you know, colour and all the flamboyance of sort of like a superstar, Billy Graham. Ten minutes after I'd given the journalist my number, my phone rang and it was Chris on the other end of the line and we booked a shoot in for the following day. And so by taking a more direct approach, I'd achieved more results in less than half an hour than I had in six months of just hopelessly sending emails. I made sure Chris had as professional an experience as possible with me in my home studio and made sure to meet him at the next show he was going to be at in my local area um, so that I could present him with some prints. Prints is something that in the current day isn't utilised often enough. I don't think people hold prints or see prints and the reality of what a, what a print is when you're actually holding it in your hands. It gives a different depth and meaning to a photograph. But I also made sure to take through a portfolio of my work and a portfolio of work from other photographers and people that I wanted to aspire to be like and I arranged to meet the promoter through Chris. I met the promoter and showed him my work and asked if there was anyone who he could recommend to come into my studio to have a similar experience. And really from there it all spiraled. They could see what I was trying to achieve, they were on board. And from there on, wrestlers just started recommending other wrestlers to come and see me. And that's kind of it, just going to shows and, and meeting people and being as professional as possible was the way that I got a foot in the door in the wrestling business. And whether I've worked for a local promotion or whether I've worked on a pay-per-view in America, 
it's been the same process really of just continually meeting new people for example when everything was happening with ring of honor and the and the young bucks and and cody and the elite was was really superseding everything and, and they put on the show at msg i wanted to be a part of that so i made sure to get the contact details of the people who rang and made the decisions at ring of honor and i made sure to produce a booklet of my work and to send it to them with my contact details so they actually had my prints in hand and so they could see the quality and the body of my work and know that I'd wanted to be there for the right reasons because I wanted to create work that was high end, that was high quality, that could fit with the brand, that could push it up to the next level and that could be part of that team and provide value. Uh, and they could see the value in the prints because it's quite easy to see a bunch of images on an email or on a Twitter feed or, or on an online portfolio, but it's quite something else to actually hold someone's prints in your hand. And I think that's where I wanted to differentiate myself from everyone else in the market. But getting into and staying in the wrestling business is, is just that not everywhere pays the same not everywhere has the same promoters not everywhere treats you the same and you need to work out where your standards lie and where you're willing to make sacrifices and where you're willing to make compromises and where you're not and only you'll really be able to know where that is the only thing you can control is yourself and the way that you put yourself over and the way that you conduct yourself when you're in and around these promotions and by being as professional as possible is a way that you can secure repeat bookings and is a way that you can secure your value with a promoter and at the moment it's completely different to when I started um, when I shoot a show now I can download the images to my phone when I'm on the way home and create instant Instagram shorts and Instagram reels and highlight reels of the images that I've shot. And really the majority of promoters and wrestlers want images quickly. That's another thing you can do to add value is by having speed as part of your service. It's a competitive marketplace. Everyone's going to approach photography differently, but there's going to be a lot of people who want to shoot and take photos at ringside or portraits backstage. But you have to, again, maintain that you're there for the right reasons. You have to maintain that you're there to add value to the product. You have to maintain that you're there to add value to the promoter, to ensure that you're a cog in the wheel that ensures the maximum amount of tickets will be sold for the next show in the presentation that you offer to that promoter for their promotion. Or indeed for the rest for whom image really is everything and by producing great images gets them noticed online and that all comes from trust. Trust is a massive part of, of what you do as a creative working in the wrestling industry and to get trust of the people who you're working with either ringside or backstage shooting portraits is a massive part of securing longevity and a positive experience in the industry. Ultimately though you can only really trust yourself and you can only control what you do. So by ensuring that you have high standards and that you're as professional as possible means that you'll not only have a fun time when you're photographing wrestling because photographing wrestling is some of the most fun I've ever had in my life you also make sure that you have a productive time and a time that's not only of good value for the people that you're working for but of good value for you.